Okay, so, uh, oh hang on, I haven't got the light on. Ugh. Shut everything down in, in the gaps. Um, this is what I wanted to show you. This is the one out of the big box. And as I suggested, it was two plants. I seem to remember potting two plants. A um, lot of old dead roots, they've all been trimmed off. Yeah, so I've got a base. Um, but I do have a new growth at this end and at this end. So I don't want to divide it anymore. We've got some good roots, not many. But what I wanted to show you is on here, this is an old leaf. Yeah, no, I'm happy with an old leaf. Most of the others are relatively new. If you turn it upside down, this is showing exactly the same markings as on the other plant that I am seriously worried about. Now this has got to be some sort of infection. It's difficult to work out what, because it's almost like a stain. These have just had hydrogen peroxide, and if you can see, that brown blotch has now rubbed off. Whatever it is, is capable of being removed. But whatever it is, it's also capable of spreading. Let me go at that. See, that's got into the leaf there. That's not going to rub off. But that bit does, huh? can just rub it off. So it's some sort of stain mechanism, but it can only have been put there by some sort of um, infection. Bacterial or fungal unknown. So, um, as I said, these have just had a go with the hydrogen peroxide. It just rubs off. Eventually, it takes a little bit of doing, but it rubs off. So it's a Whatever it is, it's on the surface, it's not on this plant, it's not damaging the leaves. But it's going to get a go with the systemic fungicide nonetheless. So that's one piece, and that's the other piece. Now this, this bit's pretty clean, there's only a slight marking on one leaf. Oh, and another. See, there's another piece there. What is it? It just wipes off. Be some sort of rust you know that you get on your roses that sort of thing I don't know but whatever it is it shouldn't be there so I'm gonna to have to deal with it now I've got a decision to make because this is the plant I want to keep now do I repot two plants in the same pot doubling my chances of blooms coming out at the same time or successively or do I plant two separate plants one to go and just keep one piece I mean, I don't really want two pots with the same thing in, so if I pop them separately, then it'll be one to go, um, and then sort of effectively start like a new plant. Um, or put them both in the same pot. I think I'll put them both in the same pot, because I am getting rid of the other one. So, um, yeah. So uh, I will find the smallest pot possible that I can cram both of those into. And this time they're not going in a deep pot. If I have to use a deep pot, it will be heavily crocked and they'll be planted quite deep in it. So not right up at the surface. That reduces the depth. Yeah? So that's that one. Now um, <clears throat> I want to show the other one because this is the one that's bad. Right, this came into two pieces. Well, it had some help. <laughs> See, now what I've got left on the surface doesn't look too bad. I've got that bit there. Now, how close can I get so that you can see? That's not a surface mark. Those are indentations. So whatever's done that has gone in through the surface of the leaf. That's not good. If we turn it over, the underside of these leaves are appalling. And these are indentations as well. They're going into the leaf. So something's getting at this plant. It's not bugs. That I do know. But whatever it is, I don't like it. And I'm, you know, while that's active, which it does seem to be at the moment, um, I can't give that plant to anybody. So that's one piece. Where's the other bit? Well, the other bit here, again, you know, the surface of the leaves look quite good. But as soon as you turn them upside down, this one, this, this growth has gone. But these two growths are quite new. Look. Those, those leaves are clean as a whistle. And the other one that's a little bit older is just starting to get the marks. So whatever this is needs to be dealt with and stopped. 
So I'm going to get my stills camera out um, once I've potted this up and take some pictures of a couple of leaves quite close up and mark them. Now I might just snip the end off or something so that I can come back to them after the treatment and see if it's still spreading. And quite honestly, this one's bad. Um, if this carries on spreading, that's going to have to go in the bin. But I can at least make an effort to stop it. As I said, these have been sprayed with hydrogen peroxide, um, but that's you know that's a surface thing. That's not going to get into the plant and do any good. Um, so uh, that's the problem. <coughs> but um, nonetheless, I'm still going to pop them up and um, see where we go from there. So these two are going in separate pots because they're to go and that'll be too much in one pot anyway. Um, I haven't even trimmed the roots on those yet. I thought I'd go over the problem first. I can do the trimming of the roots off camera. Um, that one's already been done. They're going in the same pot. So I'll sort myself some pots out, get this one trimmed up and um, find myself some pots and uh, then we'll come back and sort them out. Um, just quickly look at the Dendrobium phalaenopsis. I haven't trimmed these roots yet either, but most of the roots around the outside aren't too bad. I wouldn't say they're brilliant, um, but this is the oldest part of the plant, and quite honestly, um, these two canes are coming off anyway. That won't leave much root trimming to do. I'll do that in a minute. Let's get the let's get this type done first. So uh, I'll get myself some pots and some media, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Okay, I don't stop getting sidetracked, it's going to be tea time soon. Ugh, the afternoon's really rocketing by. I mean, I've been away and put a video up in the gap this time. I didn't film it, I just got it up on YouTube. Now, I hate these pots, but I no longer need to, because I've got a whole set of black pots with some more coming, for some sizes I didn't have. I now keep my clear pots inside a black pot stops that happening so I know no, no, I'm now happy to use my clear pots what I'm not happy about is not having any pots in between those two they seem to go from around sort of eight or nine centimeters to 13 there used to be a 10.5 or an 11 in between and I just can't get hold of them I can get black ones or, you know, terracotta coloured plastic ones, but I don't like those. Um, I like to see my roots. Now, I did notice on this piece, we do have a new growth. So that needs to point from the middle of the pot to the outside. There's no sign of new growth on the other piece, um, but there's two ends that are capable of producing a lead. So I'm going to try and get those two to go together like that, not on top of each other, but next to each other, so that they'll be the same height in the pot. And the first thing I'm going to do is tie the flipping lot together, because otherwise they're just going to flop, fall apart, and um, give me the rats, which as I said, today is not the best of ideas to do that. So all I'm going to do is tie these canes together. And they can stay tied together. It won't hurt them. These are the old canes. The new growths are going to come up round the outside. <laughs> I'd cross my fingers if I wasn't trying to hold this lot together. So I'm just going to loosely put some raffia around there to hold the two pieces together. And then tie a knot with one hand and teeth. Ah, something like that. I have got a third hand, it's called me teeth. Not suitable for all uses, obviously, um, but suitable for that, just to pull a knot tight. Um, right, so that's holding them all together and upright. In theory, that should mean I don't need to flip and stake it, but if I do, I'll have to stop and go and get a stake. This is the only thing I didn't think to bring out here. Right, now that is getting crammed in that size pot, whether it likes it or not and it will go in. Right. So I bought some big stuff out. Hello Fluffy. You've woken up, have you? Right, so some big stuff in there. If the roots get down into the big stuff, that's fine. 
they were attached to some of the larger pieces anyway, so they obviously don't mind that. But what I don't want is this staying wet through the winter, because that's where I think a lot of the roots went missing. Right, where's my new growth? Of course, my uh, raffia is not going to stay tight, is it? Because I'm wiggling the plant around. This is fiddly. Where's that new growth gone? Oh, I got it. There it is. Right. There. That's where you're going. Now, this is a mix of small and medium bark. Um, basically, the large bark on its own would have been too airy. Um, the medium bark on its own would probably have been okay, but I'm hoping some of these roots will branch, and they're more likely to do that if they're touching something. So having some small bark in here is not the end of the world. The pieces of wood and grass that I'm finding in this are becoming a little tedious. I had a look at um, the bark at Burnham's Nurseries, and um, different manufacture, so it's different to the Orchiata bark. Quite honestly, it looks pretty good. But the only way I could justify that cost is to pick it up from the nursery. I'm certainly not paying their postage charges. <laughs> but that would be viable. I'm going there in the summer for their summer fair, so I could arrange for that. Um, but they do it in either giant sacks or quite small bags. You going to stay upright. You will with a bit of help. Where's that new growth gone? I'm desperately trying not to damage that. And every time I lose sight of it, I sort of think, yeah, I could press on that, couldn't I? Where's it gone? It's hiding. Well, it's in there somewhere. Anyway, let's give that a nice tight push. These are big, thick, chunky roots on this plant. Um, so they'll burrow into the new media quite happily. Yeah, it's going to need a stake. It's going to stay upright just long enough for me to get one. I'll be back. Right. Um, it is wobbly. I'd rather it was firm. Now, it looks like I could just push a stake down through the um, raffia that I've already got. But that raffia is unlikely to stay put, quite honestly. It's highly likely to just fall and slip down. So I need another piece of raffia. And, uh, the piece that got cut off before, that will do. So we just pop that over the top of the cane. And then what I'm going to do is um, go underneath the raffia that I've already got and come back round to tie to the stake. So that way when I tie to the stake, I'm also tying that raffia loop at the same height. So I'm just sort of doing killing two birds with one stone again, basically. So the loop will hold the canes together. The tie will stop the plant flopping. Does that sound reasonable? Well, reasonable or not, that's what's happening. <laughs> if it's not getting obvious, it's getting towards the end of what's been a hell of a long day with hassle factor built in today. Don't need to go into that, but... Uh, Right, that's that one done. There's plenty of room for the roots to move. Give that a good water now, and then come back in a day or two and give it another good water, because the new bark dries out faster than, well, you only got to look at it and it's dry. So that's that one done. Right, I'll sort the next one out. I'll be back. Well, that was fun. I trimmed what looked like a dead root off, and the cane came off with it. <laughs> so, one of these pieces has now only got two canes left instead of three. So they're both... Well, there's another dead root there. They're both going in the same pot. Um, so unfortunately that means only one person will be able to have this instead of two. But they'll get more of a plant. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with this. Try and get the two bases around the same height and tangled up. And then put a piece of raffia around to try and hold them in place while I get them in a pot. 
and boy are these, I, you see I'd love to get them in that small pot but I know it's not going to happen, um, they're going to have to go in a slightly larger pot. But these are good roots and they're coming straight out from the plant, so they, they need somewhere to go or they're just going to snap. So uh, that's what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to put it in a slightly larger pot than I would like, but um, these roots should branch. A lot of the ends of the roots have been trimmed because I know I've got to get it in a pot. So they've actually been trimmed off and as I've said before you trim an active root and it'll branch. So you can always squash them in a smaller pot than perhaps you thought you might just by allowing for that to happen. So this is going to go back in um, one of the pots it came out of but it's going to be heavy on the crocking in the bottom because this isn't a particularly deep pot, it's got a very flat bottom, wide bottom. So it's actually not a bad pot, when you look at the profile of it, it's not a long one of those that's wide at the top and skinny at the bottom, it's not bad, but as a consequence to that there's a wide base there, so there's plenty of room for media to sit in the bottom and stay wet if there's no roots in it. I suspect these roots are going to get down in there pretty quick. But nonetheless, I want them sitting on the crocking. That's the start point. Are they all going to go in? Ooh, they're going to struggle. No clicking, no, no bending and breaking. Just go in there nicely. Behave. <laughs> right. Done. Let me get some media in round there. I'm going to try not to leave too many air gaps in this because um, some of those active roots are actually in the middle of, well, now, in the middle of the pot. Um, obviously, uh, that's, the, that's the place you're most likely to get an air gap, quite honestly, especially if you've got quite a tangled root system, is the bit in the middle of the pot. And I've got active roots there on this repot, so you can, see, well, you can see there's a great big hole down the middle there where I need to get some media. <laughs> But that's why I do it one side at a time. Now I can see what I'm doing. I can see that the media is going down in that center section. And then all we've got to do is uh, fill up the gaps right in the edges. Some of these pots are going to be sat right at the root. Pots are going to be sat right on top of the roots. And the roots might even be sat right on top of the pot. As this day goes on, it's actually getting worse. <laughs> it's because I'm tired, basically. And when you're tired, even your mouth doesn't work properly. And that's going some for me. But this one is going to stay upright nicely. Because it had more roots than the last one. And with the um, tie, with the base just sat on the media, not buried, just sat on the media. This type of plant does not want its base buried. It'll cause, it'll be fine probably in the growing season, but come the winter when this needs to dry thoroughly in between watering, because it'll go into a sort of resting period. I won't call it a proper rest, but you know, the drier in winter bit. Um, obviously if the base is sat in the media and it's cold, it could easily start rotting. So uh, that's that one done. What have we got left then? Right, what we've got left is the um, Phalaenopsis dendrobium and I haven't done the roots yet, so uh, I'll be back. Some accidents are just sitting there waiting to happen. So my tie angel is now tie angels, which means somebody gets one of these because I don't want to. <laughs> um, literally, when I tried to take the two old canes off, um, the join was so flimsy it wasn't worth keeping. But what we've got there is an unbloomed growth with a very strong new growth and some reasonable roots. These are not bad, They're, they'll do. Um, and obviously the new growth will produce some more roots, so that's not a problem. So that's one piece, small though it is, it's perfectly viable. Yeah. And then the other piece has got the cane that's just had the spike taken off. One old, relatively small one, but I'm going to leave it on for a bit of support. And the previous growth that bloomed, um, which I do believe, I've just spotted this, mind, that's a spike. 
Yeah, uh, well, oh, hang on, I've got to find the camera. And there's leaves in the way. That's a spike on the end of my thumb there. So this cane that's already bloomed last year has a spike starting. The one that's just finished blooming hasn't. <laughs> Nonetheless, this hasn't got... The older roots on here are not brilliant. They're not soggy, but they're not brilliant. But they might branch out, they might carry on growing. Um, but on this piece I've got some strong new roots starting, but no new growth showing yet. So I've got a combination of the two here. Um, right, the single piece, that's just a single cane, so that can go in quite a small pot. Um, the roots are going to go, see I've got an active root tip there, which is a nuisance. I'd love to trim that root off, but that is my only active root tip on that plant. So I'm going to have to try and get it in the bottom of the pot. So I'm going to tease the roots in now, so that that new root tip is protected, before I put the crocking in. So there'll be one or two roots down in amongst the crocking. Yeah? And they'll promptly grow out the bottom of the pot, I expect. So there's some quite large bark in the bottom. That's because I don't want this staying soggy in the winter time. Yeah? Now, if I didn't have low temperatures in the winter, I wouldn't worry about this because these would continue to grow if I could keep my temperatures up. Um, they would grow continuously, but not in my place. So I have to allow for these being cooled down and not going dormant, but not far off it, they will cease to grow. They will stop growing altogether and slow right down to next to no activity at all. Perhaps an odd root pushing out now and again. So I've got to allow for that. I've got to have a media that will allow for very fast drying in the winter time. So I'm not potting it up for the growing season, I'm potting this up for the winter season. And I might even be potting it up for somebody else. <laughs> Which in this case is highly likely. Now are you going to stand upright on your own with those nice big thick fleshy roots nice and firm in the pot? Yeah, but not that good. You're going to try the steak, I'm afraid. I don't like steaks. They, you know, they make the plant look a bit untidy. But um, until, as I said, I've got a new growth on here, but no new roots. And on the other one, I've got new roots and no new growth. So uh, we'll just uh, secure that. I suppose I better go around the steak first, and it? or it'll slide down. It's a little short bit that I cut off just now, but it's just about long enough to get a knot in. Just to hold that steady. Just about. So we don't want to attempt anything fiddly at the moment, because uh, if it doesn't work, I shall get the amp. Just about. Yep, that's one done. Now, unfortunately, that's the last pot that size, so I'm going to have to go to the next one up, which is too big. So we'll have to be extra heavy on the uh, cropping. But this is the one with the new roots coming out, so it, it's going to, well, I won't say fill the pot, but it's going to use a lot more of this pot than perhaps it would do otherwise. But a lot of cropping in the bottom, so that if the root activity is not in the bottom of the pot by the time the winter comes, it's cropped. I can't for the life of me seeing this stand up on its own, but um, we'll see what we can do. It would be nice. But you stand more chance of getting a plant to stay firm in a pot if you've got thick fleshy roots. The thin flimsy ones don't normally have it, they just, they just won't. Now these roots are what I call semi-brittle. If you push your luck, they'll snap but they're actually quite flexible. They're not bad. So you can be uh, not brutal, but you can actually firm them down quite good. And I'm not firming anywhere near my new roots. No, you're not going to stand up, are you? I can tell. Right, you just top the pot. Just about got enough left. Again, base of the plant, sat on the media, not buried. And those new roots are going to go straight down in the media anyway, so um, they'll help firm it up. Right, so without letting go, we 
need to stake on that cane. So that's the one that's going to do the most good. Now are you going to balance there while I get some raffia? You're not, are you? You're going to have to put another stake in to stop it falling over. I've only got two hands, unfortunately. If I can get that there, it should lean on it. You're going to lean on it? You're not going to. You're not going to play ball, are you? Right, we will have to get the raffia out one-handed. Not possible, of course, but uh, not as easy as having two hands. That means I've got to do my knots with one hand as well. This double loop system for tying raffia onto a cane is really good. Um, you make a loop yeah, with the piece you've used on the top and then you do exactly the same thing again and put the second loop underneath the first one and then put the loops over something and pull the two ends and that will bite on and not move. So it won't slide, it'll just grip. I'm sure it's got a name, that knot. And it can be tied without like doing the two loop thing <laughs> it's much easier if you can do the two loops but to do the two loops obviously you have to be able to put your two loops over the top of the wherever you're tying it to so like you couldn't you couldn't do that knot on a ring because you wouldn't be able to uh, go over the top of it so you'd have to learn how to tie it the other way which I can't be bothered I'm happy with that this is wobbling about the stake isn't even firm. I've got a feeling I'm going to need both stakes. Let's leave that one there and see if I can get this one tied on as well. It's just not holding. This stake seems a lot firmer, so that one's going to do a better job. Ugh. Half the time, this raffia is so thick compared with my other stuff. It's strong. The other stuff was flimsy, and if it got wet, it just fell apart. So I got the. St <laughs> it's going to be a swear word in a minute. <laughs> right, you're going to go right down there so you can't slip off, and then I'll move you up when you're tight. Um, but this stuff is so strong, it it pushes things around as you're trying to tie it. That's the only sort of expression I can use. Um, it's like tying thin cardboard really. But it does the job and if it gets wet it still stays strong. So it's sort of better. It's just not so easy to tie. Right, two stakes. That's still not that firm. And the reason is this stake is wobbly. Bring it out, Let's see if I can get it in better. See if it will go in again and grab hold. Ugh. Still not good. Well, let's try again, take it up. Let's push it over at an angle, see if that will make it tight. I'll end up breaking this stick in a minute. It's so the trouble is, it's hitting that large bark in the bottom of the pot, and as soon as it hits one of those pieces, ah, that sounded better. So it needs to go round the edge of pieces of bark, obviously. That's better. That's got it. Thank you. You just like causing a hassle, don't you, today? There's quite a few things I've been doing that today, causing a hassle. Well, I've only put one knot in that as well. That's not going to help, is it? Turn round, it will fall apart. That's got it. Right. That is it. God, it's nearly tea time now. Where did the afternoon go? So we now have um, Thai Angel times two. Um, and this is the um, stronger plant that looks like it's going to bloom again. But at the moment there's no new growths. But... Um, you can see I've got the back end of the plant that is just not going to shoot out. If I'm going to get new growths, they're going to come out from one or both of these. So they, they've got room to push their new roots out, you know, across the centre of the pot. And um, 
This one's been potted up again with the back, back near the back of the pot and the new growth here. Seems strange that it should push out a new growth on this one without new roots and yet over there it started roots early. Anyway, so we have two Thai angels now. Lovely blooms on that, you know, as Dendrobium phalaenopsis go, that's one of the nicest ones I've personally seen. But we all have different tastes. I'm sure some people like the deep purple ones or the red ones. Or the one I used to like, which I lost, which was, um, it was a sort of white with purple veining coming out of the centre and then the outside was deep purple. That was quite a nice one, but I lost that one. Um, anyway, that's this session done. <laughs> I've managed it without any swear words at all, which is, uh, I was pushing it a couple of times. So that's that repotting session done, and that's not effectively plants off my list, leaving very, very few now. So there certainly won't be any big sessions like this anymore this year, uh, which is good because I'm getting low on the big bark. But I'm certainly not getting any till I need it, which will probably be next year now. I don't need any much more this year. Anyway, that's probably ended up a long one and lots of bits all put together. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.